Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we're going to talk about another directive, structural directive, the ng switch. So in case, because we learned switch case a long time ago, in case you don't remember, quick summary, when you have a switch that equals this switch equals a particular value, and then you get this value and you match it up with a case. So if this value switch matches up with the case, then this information will be executed, okay? It will be run. So it's a, it's basically a series of if statements. If this matches this, else um, if it matches this, else if it matches this, right? That's all it really is. But it's a nice and simplified form. It makes it easier. So if you have big, huge, long lines and options of um, case and switch, it's easier to, to do in this particular form. But that's essentially what it is. Now we have... In here, um, Angular, notice the brackets. So this is data, right? So we will get data from the class right inside of here, and it will send information up into this section itself to give us our data, right? So data flows this direction. Um, please ignore this just for a second right here, okay? Then I'm going to have these cases right inside of here, and then I'm going to say send match this with this. Now, notice the difference in syntax. So this has brackets. This has a asterisk. Why? Well, this one, again, we're getting data from the app co component right here, the class. Here, we're actually getting information from right here. So this is just matching the element attribute, or I guess it would be the DOM property, okay? So this would be matching the DOM property. You know, I'm going to be honest, I, I still mess those things up itself. It'll be either the attribute or the property. It'll be one of those things but you're still matching up this information with this information. So this is actually a property of the element in and of itself, right? So we're not actually getting information anywhere else. So we're not binding any further information. This is just a characteristic because this could have said match value equals Toyota type equals button. It could have matched any of those. Well, you can't really, but I think you understand that that's why this has an asterisk it's a property of this particular element and this element alone, whereas this one has brackets because it takes data binding and it gets information data from another location. Okay, so we get all of these. Notice I'm going to match a string right here. So it's going to be ng case switch. Notice the camel case also equals quotations. But then there's another mini quotation, uh, single quotation, excuse me, in between because this value is a string itself. Okay. And so if you run it as it is, string car equals make, it's going to send information here, car equals make, it's going to match. Does this have make, this have make, this have make, this have make? No. Excuse me, it should be right here. None of these are make, so it's going to go to the ng switch default, which is going to be lemon. And for the record, if you don't know what a lemon is, in the United States, when we call something a lemon, a car a lemon, it's just a junk car. So it's, um, it's, a car that basically falls apart frequently and needs maximum amount of maintenance. All right. So let's run this web application and see how it goes. <clears throat> okay. So just like we said, make, whoops, um, make will get inserted into the input. Right there. And then lemon would be the actual button input element because it would default to this. None of these apply. Remember, this is a structural directive. So these would not be created. This button would be created. Okay. But it's a little bit limited, right? There's not much I can actually do with something like this. So I'm going to make an input type equals text right here and say, number one, click. So this is an event, right? Clear. It will send information when I click on the button, it will send information to the clear. It should have been on clear or something like that. Um, it'll send information to this function right here, which will basically turn car into the value blank. And that's exactly what happens, right? You click on it and it goes away. So that's, that's not new. The new part is not really new part, but semi new part is the data binding. So what I want to happen is I have information. I want to be able to type information inside of here. And then I want this information to be sent back down here. So this value will equal this value down here. 
And therefore, this value will be sent back up to this value right there. And therefore, the rest of the thing can go on. The program can go on, all right? So that's my goal. Now, why do I have to use two-way data binding? Well, when you think about it, what else am I going to use, right? If I, I use the brackets, it's going to get information from here and send it up here. That's not what I want, right? I want information when I fill it out to send it back down in this direction. Well, you, what if you just used the parentheses only itself? Well, that would make it an event binding itself. So it would point to an event, but it would not actually change the value of the unless unless the method was actually to change the value of the um, uh, variable. But then again, you would have to have a huge hold, probably case switch down in the uh, in a new subclass, um, not a, in a, in a function, right? So you can't just do value equals this or ng model. You, you can't just get this value like you can click, make an event, and then you'd have to create a whole new function right there, which is gonna be a lot of work. So the only simple way of doing it is by using two-way data binding to make the information go from here down to here, and make, change the value of car, the value of car is changed and sent back up inside of here. And that's the easiest way to do it. So that's a perfect example of how to use two-way data binding to make your life a heck of a lot easier, okay? So let's see if that works. So I'm going to type anything else. Hi, that's not going to work. But what if I type Ford? It changes, right? How about Toyota? As soon as I finish Toyota, it actually changes. So this is an ongoing thing, pro web application, that as soon as you make the change of the car, value car, and it equals ng switch case, it automatically switches the value and it switches the type button and it creates this new button in and of itself. And I'm pretty sure the the uh, underlying button, okay, so for example, um, I, I put an extra space there and so that's gonna turn out lemon. I'm pretty sure that when I delete that, the lemon input element, the type button um, value lemon that particular element gets deleted altogether it's not just hidden it's deleted altogether okay and so this one is created and it's created and and destroyed right in front of your face in real time okay so that's the ng switch with ng switch case um i hope that uh, comes in handy sometime in the future i had a hard time understanding it, but now that I understand it, it seems to work pretty smoothly. Okay, thank you very much.